Hey guys, this is Zona with Eat Your Feelings and I am so excited to bring you these really great gluten-free pecan sandies, which are also keto. So good. So I'm going to go ahead and take these uh, lovely pecans that I had already measured out. I went ahead and bought them in halves because that was the most cost effective. Um, go ahead and do whichever one that you need. And then I'm going to use the food processor to go ahead and blend these up so that they're nice and fine so that in the cookies it makes the most sense. So the food processor and then I'll just get this here. Dump it on. sure it clicks you want it to click so that everything is where it's supposed to be all right so then I'm gonna actually go ahead and just pulse it I don't want these super fine ground because um, I don't want them to be like an almond flour I just want them to be small enough that they fit in the should be right. So, let me get this all pulled out so I can and I can show you. All right, so if you see, they're not, it's not like flour, it's not super small. So you definitely don't want it to be so small that you can't figure out what it is or how it's different from um, the flour itself that we're using in these. So you wanna be able to see that there's a nut in it. <laughs> Um, so these are the pecan sandies. All right, so then I'll go ahead and put that back in there. Keep the blade back where you're not gonna like stab yourself to death because that's a terrible idea. And then I'll go ahead and just get these out of here. So I went ahead and put the amount for the recipe, which will be uh, down below the video. So if you guys do need or would like to make these for yourself, for something for the holiday, it's a really good recipe. All right, so we'll have this. So we got that one all ready to go. And then we just have our butter that we have had uh, softening uh, all day. So this is actually for a double batch. So I went ahead and doubled the amount that you'll see in the recipe. And then um, if you get any of the sugar-free uh, extracts, this will be kind of a really good one for you. Uh, it's just a Madagascar vanilla extract, but it's not one to be married to a certain brand or anything if you don't need it for um, adding in just a little bit of flavor that you need for the recipe. And of course we have our almond flour. And the almond flour is probably the best part. So let me get this out of the way. Put this here. All right. So with that being said, we are going to go ahead and you'll see the recipe down below. I'm going to just take this. I'm going to do a double batch. The single batch does make about nine, 10 cookies, depending on the size that you do. But I want a few extra because I promised my nephew that he would have cookies today. And if any of you have nephews or boys that will eat, he definitely likes to eat. Um, all right, so then I just literally take this and I'll go ahead and just level this off. I'm sure people have seen this, you know, cooking with their parents or whatever, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And just put the extra back into the packaging. And that way you're not dealing with um, uneven cups. So this is just the one. I always tap it out. You do not have to do that. But, uh, and then I need the half. I'll just get this one leveled out just the same way. So, right. if you guys have any questions, let me know. 
and then uh, in this bowl I really am just doing the dry ingredients so right now that is my almond flour and then I already showed you my lovely pecans that we chopped again it's not supposed to be like a flour so you want to be able to see the different pieces in it and you just add those together and then just do a pinch of the salt. Now I really like the Himalayan salt and then I'm just going to give this a toss together. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, So I'm literally just going to toss this together and that way it's well combined. Um, and then I'm going to set my dry ingredients aside so they are ready to go. Just kind of eyeballing it to make sure that it looks super fantastic. It smells really good already, if you can believe that. <laughs> oh, I just love this stuff. Okay. So then I'll go ahead and I'll set this one aside. And then let me grab a bowl for my wet ingredients. And I try not to use my hands as much as possible but this recipe is so finicky with um being over mixed so you definitely don't want to um over mix it at all which is why we're not using our um the mixer at all so i want to make sure you guys are using you seeing this butter like it's it's pretty soft it's not it's not giving me much resistance and then we're going to take our uh, versatile, which is this one. Now you guys can use whatever brand you would like. This one is just uh, Stevia. So you just twist this lovely cap off with ease. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take this, and it is a fourth of a cup for a single recipe. I'm just going to double it. So there's that. Okay. So then we're just going to get that all over your butter. It's going to be so great. Okay. I'm not going to set that in front of the camera. All right, and then this is usually just a half teaspoon. So since we're doubling our recipe, we want to do the full measure. All right, here's another pro tip. When you guys are getting um, measuring cups, measuring spoons, get something that isn't a sticker and actually is raised. And that way, as you wash it and as you use it, you will not have as much issue with um, it wiping off or wearing off or coming off in the sink and then you're not worried about that because that really does suck, I promise you. All right, so half bam, half bam. All right, so then let's put the lid back on so you don't knock it over because sometimes I'm clumsy. Right. Then you're just gonna cream this together. You can kind of see how um, many of you who have like baked and stuff with your family as a kid this was always like the first thing that we started kids out in my family with was creaming the butter and the sugar together so you see it just kind of makes like a fun butter sugar paste even though this is an actual sugar you still just want to kind of work it in the same way So it doesn't take very long if you set your butter out. If you do not set your butter out, um, try to make sure that it is not melted. 
when you put it in here because it does make it um, react a little bit differently in the recipe. So you can see how pretty this is. It's completely combined and it works nice. And then just scrape that off there. Okay. So with this, I am going to mix it with the mixer. Um, this type of a mixer by hand and not an actual uh, electronic or electric. <laughs> electric mixer of any kind. Yes, I am laughing at my own jokes. It's totally fine. It's what everyone's supposed to do, right? And then I'm just going to work it in kind of as quickly as possible. So using the least amount of strokes. So I don't know if you guys have ever made brownies before. We used to have these brownies that we would make as a kid and we call them hundred stroke brownies because you couldn't use any more than a hundred strokes to mix them or they'd be tough. So let me know if you guys have done any like mixing like this, baking like this when you were a kid. You see, just want to make sure you're kind of gently creaming everything together, dumping it on the counter, you know, whatever's needed. Okay. If you are having a hard time with the spatula, you can go ahead and mix it by hand. So you just want to incorporate your almond flour, your pecans, your butter and sugar, and vanilla together nicely. Ooh. So they can be friends. <laughs> All right. So this is almost together. You can see it kind of starts to like stick together and it comes together pretty quickly. I'm going to just scrape down this to make sure there's not any other butter left on the spatula. Just a little bit left to incorporate. But this literally comes together in like a minute. And that's the whole thing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my measuring spoons to measure out my cookie size on here. Um, this is still gonna be fairly crumbly. That is expected, so you're not doing anything wrong. Um, you can see though, it kind of sticks to itself. That's pretty great. And usually a lot of pecan sandies, people will uh, not do them quite as much as a drop cookie, but I am gonna kind of do these as a drop cookie. So let me get my cookie sheet and we'll be ready to go. I went ahead and got my sheet trays and I have two of them just because you want to give these guys enough space and you can form these with your hands. I am not going to form them with my hands. I'm going to scoop. They are still kind of falling apart. That is totally normal. When they bake up, they will be good to go. No worries putting about 12 cookies on each tray. Um, like I said, this is a double batch though. So you get more out of this than you would the regular one. Okay. Once you get the tray filled with about 12, evenly spaced. And I literally am just taking the edge of the bowl and flattening this off. So it's not like perfectly precise and that's going to be okay. It's going to, come together just fine um, so you don't have to try to like get to a butter knife to flatten out everything so that it's absolutely perfect 
And then here is a fun part that you can do with some kiddos is actually take just anything you have that's flat and clean and just kind of smash them down. See? So if it sticks at all like that, um, you can just spray the top of it. Okay. Now if you spray that really over your floor very much, it will <laughs> make the floor slippery. So be careful. So I do not want perfectly precise round ones just because I like it when they look a little bit more organic. You are absolutely more than welcome to make them look as pretty and as perfect as you'd like them to be. I just don't find there's a lot of necessity in that. So do what you need to do to feel better about your cookies. Um, I kind of like the organic look of them because then people know they're not store-bought. And with everybody bringing store-bought cookies to almost everything, even having the um, homemade looking cookies is almost a miracle anymore. So even if this is for you guys, even if this is for your Thanksgiving, um, try this recipe out. If this is for your Christmas, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, but these are really a great cookie year-round. And, funny enough, the pecan sandies are my Aunt Sandy's favorite cookie. So, you can see mine are just all different shapes. None of them are perfectly round. And then you just pop them in the oven and they bake for about 10 minutes. But almond flour does burn pretty quickly, so you do want to keep an eye on them. So I'm looking And then I set a timer on my phone. So guys, it's been about 10 minutes. I'm gonna have you guys go ahead and watch as I pull them out. Kind of see what I'm looking for here. It's kind of brown around the edges. And you do wanna make sure you're paying attention because the, um, the almond flour will cook faster than regular flour and it'll brown a lot faster. So you can see, they're cute, they're a little soft still. It takes time for them to set up. They do have to cool. And then we will have a lovely view of this on our cutting board uh, as soon as they cool down enough to take them off the sheet tray. All right, if you guys like this recipe, if you guys wanna see other recipes like this that's gluten-free baking, they're super tasty, uh, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, we love that you guys were here and that you watched with us. Um, make sure you follow us on Instagram and we'll see you soon.